Welcome to Garage Science, and today I'm very excited to get to release the first of uh, hopefully will be many uh, different forms of software developed uh, by Garage Science, and uh, that'll be free to use and download. Uh, this particular piece of software is going to be a grayscale generator for DLP 3D printers, and the purpose of this software is to create grayscale images that will even out the light uh, distribution across your projection area, so that way you get uh, even curing all the way across your build area. This will allow you to print bigger parts and use your entire build area on a single print uh, a lot more easier without dealing with uh, either underexposure or overexposure. So in order to get this software, you need to go to the Patreon link in the video description. Uh, from there, you can go to GitHub uh, to get the software. The reason I'm using Patreon is because it did take six months to develop this software. Uh, not that it's necessarily uh, complicated in and of itself, but it was just a fairly large uh, side project. And so if you feel like uh, the software is um, helpful enough that uh, it's worth donating, then uh, feel free to uh, donate to that Patreon account. Otherwise, you can just go to the GitHub page and download the software for free and also use it for free. I'll also be covering a basic overview of how the software works, so uh, as you are using it, you can kind of understand what it's doing and uh, how you can best use it to, to uh, improve your 3D printer performance. I'll also show you how to go about installing software. It's very simple. Uh, the software itself is only about one megabyte uh, in size. It's very small. Uh, it's very simple to install. So I'll go through that as well. And with that, we'll, uh, we'll dive right in. All right, so I've created this uh, really simple kind of mock-up of what the grayscale generator is, is kind of seeing in, in terms of the data that you input. So uh, some of the parameters you'll input is your projector's native resolution. You'll also input the build area for the X and Y axis uh, to allow the program to determine the resolution of each pixel and uh, be able to calculate based off the overall size of your build area, uh, what areas need to be grayed out, uh, etc. In addition to that, you're also going to put in a matrix of data that is going to use to interpolate uh, how gray different portions of the image need to be. And uh, what those data points represent is essentially the amount of exposure it takes to cure a certain portion of the build area. So if you think about it like this, uh, if you look at it from the top down, you've got these outside edges here. This is your uh, margin. So you have a vertical margin on either side and a horizontal margin on the top and bottom, similar to what you would have for like a Word document. And so you can either set those margins to zero if you'd like, uh, or uh, have them inset uh, some amount. You can't change the left and right or the top and bottom uh, independently. So the top and bottom will change uh, by the same amount and then the left and right will change by the same amount. Then essentially what the program says is, okay, well you put some matrix of data in and I have one data point that starts at the bottom left corner and then it works across to the bottom right corner and then it goes up to the other two corners on the top. And then it evenly spaces the data points in the middle there. Uh, you specify how long the side needs to be on each of these columns so that way the program knows how many pixels to use for that uh, given uh, data point, basically like the, the value there. So, so whatever pixels are on a single post here, well basically they'll all have the same grayness because they're all at the same height. Now speaking of the height, uh, is that so that what that's representing is uh, the amount of exposure it takes to cure uh, your resin. So if, if you think about this almost as if I tried to print uh, this part and then as it printed I progressively lowered the exposure times then the portion on the left side of the part here would cure more easily because it was printed taller so as the exposure times became less and less it was still able to print because it was getting enough exposure however on the right side it failed to print beyond a certain point and so it's much shorter and that's because as the exposure times became less and less, uh, eventually there wasn't enough time to expose the resin enough for it to cure and adhere to the parts. So it failed and now you have a shorter post. So these heights represent um, the exposure times for that given area of your build area. The advantage of 
this approach is that it doesn't require any additional tools that only requires sample printing to determine where the low spots are in the light distribution of your build area. One other data point you'll have to uh, input is the amount of grayness it will take to basically uh, even out the highest exposure points uh, in your build area because what the program is doing is it's not it doesn't do anything magical like make your low exposure areas uh, increase in exposure. What it does is it flattens out the high exposure areas so that way the entire build area exposes uh, at the same level as your lowest exposure area. So it's kind of the, the chain is only as strong as the weakest links. Whatever portion of your builder it has the lowest UV light output, uh, the grayscale image is basically going to flatten out all of the high UV output areas so that way they all have the same UV output. So in addition to determining where the low spots are in your build area, you'll also need to determine uh, what the maximum amount of grayness is needed to lower your high light distribution areas down to whatever your low distribution areas are. So it should take a few test prints to actually get all the data you need to uh, do a grayscale mask. All right, so kind of overviewed how the program works. What I'm going to do now is show you how to install software. What you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to the Patreon link in the video description, and that's gonna bring you here. Uh, from here, you can uh, become a patron if you uh, think this software is worth uh, donating to. I would greatly appreciate that if you did. Uh, otherwise, you can just go straight to the GitHub link. And from there, you can go to your garagescience.zip, click on that. And from there, you hit download. All right, so we've downloaded our file. We're gonna put it on the desktop and I'll show you how to extract it and um, essentially install it. So we're gonna start by doing extract all. We're gonna extract it right to here. And we can go into this folder and see that, okay, we have a grayscale generator and here's the files. Like I said, it's not a big program. Uh, it's really, it's not even a megabyte. So it's, it's, it's nothing uh, too intense. Uh, if you need written instructions, there's uh, written installation instructions here. You can also view the change log. And it is a Java-based program. But uh, really what you wanna do once you get to this point is you're gonna go to the Grayscale Generator application. You're gonna hit copy and then minimize it, and then just right click on your desktop and hit paste shortcut. All right, once you get your shortcut on the desktop, you go ahead and just double click on it, and we'll open up the Grayscale Generator app. Uh, when, the first time you open this application, it might uh, throw up some uh, warning about how publisher is unknown, uh, yada, 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 something about how your computer could be at risk for a virus, um, like I said, I'm not trying to infect anyone's computer. There's no such virus in this uh, software, so you can feel free to ignore those warnings, and it's, uh, it's safe. All right, from there, you can go ahead and click on the watch tutorial, and that will take you to the tutorial playlist, and you can see how to input the values for all this data and actually create an image. Hope you got a lot out of this overview. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope you get a lot out of this software. I enjoyed uh, making it. And like I said, if you uh, find this software useful, consider donating because that does help uh, motivate me to uh, produce more uh, products like this and uh, make it free and open to use uh, for anyone and everyone. Thanks for watching.